So I want you to tune in very closely to this Air India Flight 171 video and see if we can hear that propeller-like sound from the RAT. That's the Ram Air Turbine. To me, there is that unmistakable sound of a propeller. You can definitely make your own decisions, but that's what it sounds like to me. And today I'm gonna to be doing a full update from the videos that I've done on Air India Flight 171. But today's video, to me, is gonna be completely groundbreaking because we're gonna be focusing on the RAT, the Ram Air Turbine. That thing spins at roughly 20,000 repetitions per minute, and that's why it makes that sound. We'll talk about why that Ram Air Turbine is so groundbreaking, the different malfunctions that become a part of that. We're also gonna talk about the flap setting, what we're gonna learn from looking at close-up videos, and then we'll talk about the landing gear, and then some final thoughts at the end. And I'll use my experience as an F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, Boeing 737 pilot and Airbus A220 pilot. I'll give you my breakdown from flying airliners for years on what I think is happening with some updates that you haven't gotten from me so far. And again, thoughts and prayers to all those affected. This accident claimed nearly 300 lives. I changed the lights in the background to yellow as a sign of solidarity. My thoughts and prayers are with all those affected. But today we're diving into the Ram Air Turbine or the RAT as we like to call it. It signals to me a catastrophic failure. It's also been said, myself included, that the plane could have taken off with zero flaps, but we're gonna look at some close-up photos and we're gonna weigh different options on how that might not be the case. The standard procedure for a Boeing 787-8 takeoff likely in this scenario would involve at least a flap five settings. And there's conflicting reports out there talking about flap zero, flap five, flap 15. So we'll look at some other Boeing 787 takeoffs and make a comparison. Let's go ahead and look at some other airliners landing with their rats and we'll compare that sound. This is an ANA 787 Dreamliner and we'll listen to its rat. So definitely more distinct of a sound, but who's ever filming this video is a lot closer and who knows, they might have a better microphone on their equipment, but you can definitely hear that distinct sound there. And to me, it just is a stronger version of what I heard with that Air India video. Okay, and here's one more. This is an American Airlines flight with its rat deployed and it's a Boeing 787 as well. Again, you can kind of hear that passing sound, right? Like as the rat gets to a certain point from the viewer, you hear it just kind of like we did on that Air India video. So to me, it's pretty clear that that sound matches and is very similar to what we heard in that Air India video. So as a quick recap, I've covered most of this in my previous videos, but I'll just do a quick recap. Air India flight 171 was scheduled from a Metabods Sardar Airport or VAAH flying to London Gatwick. It was carrying 230 passengers and 12 crew. It took off at 1.38 p.m. on June 12th. The temperature was roughly 40 degrees Celsius, so a very hot day. It was registered as a call sign of Victor Tango dash Alpha November Papa. It took off from runway 23, and that runway is 11,500 feet long. And then just 30 seconds later, it made that disastrous plunge and unfortunately hit a populated area. This was the first fatal crash of the Boeing 787. So the RAT deployment, the fact that that looks like it came out is especially important because the safety record of this Boeing 787 has been so stellar. So now I wanna do a deep dive on the best image I can find of a close up of Air India 171 in flight and it's from the eyewitness cell phone video. So I'll start breaking down the things I'm seeing. So first of all, the biggest, most obvious thing that looks out of place is the fact that the gear are down. So that would not be the case if this was a normal situation. As soon as you break ground as a pilot and you have that positive VVI, that vertical velocity showing a positive, as the pilot monitoring, not the one on the controls, but the one monitoring the situation would say positive rate and then the pilot flying would say gear up. So those would be sucked up pretty much immediately. So that is very odd. But there's other more subtle clues here that I want us to take a peek at. And we'll start with the fact that it looks like there's some sort of shadow or some sort of break in the wings, which looks to me like it could be the flaps that have come down. It could also signal that the spoilers are up, which are a speed break, but that wouldn't make 
a lot of sense to me at this point. What would make more sense to me would be the fact that it's at a flap five or maybe even a little larger of a flap setting. So it looks like there might be actually some curve on the back. Again, hard to verify, but with this close up, I'm starting to believe that maybe this wasn't a flap zero situation. And then the next and maybe less obvious thing is that the fact that it looks like there are some pixels in the bottom right section of the wing root, and that is where the rat would be deployed. So it looks to me like there is a rat deployed based on the fact that this is a grainy image, so we kind of have to use our judgment here, but there are some pixels that are black in the exact place where the rat would be. So to me, it looks like a rat, smells like a rat, it might be the rat. And now quickly, I wanna to talk to you about a Qatari Boeing 787 takeoff from Manchester Airport. I want you to look at its wing. I'll put it side by side with an image of Air India 171 and this Qatari 787. They're both 787-8s, and you can kind of see how it is hard to tell where the break in the flaps is, but there is actually kind of a dark line, even on that 787 from Qatari Airlines. So I want you to look at that and compare it to the Air India and maybe perhaps that shadow we're seeing is just a slight break in the wings, which is actually showing us some flaps. But I want to step back to the takeoff of this Qatari 787. Let's just watch it as it rolls down the runway. It's going to be a very cool close up. So let's check it out and take a look at the flaps as it goes by. It's really hard to see that they're down once it gets a little further away. But when it's close up, you can really tell the flaps are down. So those flaps are not at flap zero. But it looks like they blend right in with the wing. So again, very hard to tell on the Boeing 787 when flaps are actually down because they blend so well with the wing, which isn't normal for most airliners. And as a pilot flying airliners for many years, it's very hard to take off with flaps at a zero position. There's so many different checks you do to make sure that doesn't happen, that it just doesn't make sense to me. With the captain and first officer having so much experience in this situation, taking off with flaps zero, it just, something doesn't seem right about that to me as a pilot. And then some people have said, well, maybe they raise the flaps instead of the gear after takeoff. Now, I had this happen to me when I was flying a Cessna and I was flying with an untrained pilot. That pilot had maybe five flights in a Cessna. I had just gotten my private pilot's license this person was a friend of mine. He went on to become a great pilot, but he didn't have any flight experience at the time, literally five flights in a Cessna and a few aviation classes. That's the type of level of pilot that might make that error to throw the flaps up when they're meaning to touch the gear or they're meaning to touch the power because the controls are so different inside the aircraft. They're actually built to not look the same at all on purpose. There's a reason why the flap handle is flat, kind of like a flap, and the gear handle has a little wheel on it so that in your pilot brain, when you're tired or you've had a long day or multiple flights, you can make sure you're doing the right thing. So these pilots making that mistake, I'm just not buying it. But let's deep dive into that rat deployment. It essentially changes everything. The rat powers only critical systems like primary flight controls, hydraulic pumps for the ailerons and the elevators. Those are the big flight controls. They also power basic instruments like the attitude indicator and limited navigation displays. It doesn't power non-essentials like cabin lights or landing gear or the full avionics. It only powers what's needed to fly and land. And on a Boeing 787, the rat deploys automatically in specific conditions. And here's where I want you to really hone in on. Those specific conditions are total loss of both engine driven generators, which would come with dual engine failure or both engines not providing enough to drive those engine driven generators and then failure of both main electrical power centers or complete hydraulic loss. Pilots can also deploy that rat if needed if the automatic system fails. So dual engine failure, that's a prime suspect. If both engines are losing thrust or one's getting the aircraft off the runway and then the other one's starting to fail as well, that could be the case. And that's hinted at by the Mayday call where the pilots actually mention trouble with their engines. That would cut generator power and that could trigger the rat. And then total electrical failure is another possibility. And there's been faults in the 787 electrical system before, nothing this serious, but a massive fault could 
disable both power centers. And if fuel starvation from that vapor lock caused by that 40 degrees Celsius heat starved the engines of fuel, then all bets are off and both of those power plants are gonna shut down. So that rat is highly important in situations like this. It's an emergency power source and it deploys automatically, but again, the pilots can throw it down if they need to. It generates electrical power and in some cases, hydraulic power to maintain critical systems for safe flight and handling. So while the rat can provide backup hydraulic power to certain systems, its output is limited compared to primary pumps and it's designed to prioritize flight control systems and avionics over what's deemed more non-essential systems. So let's talk about what all that means and the specific situations in Air India 171. Seeing that rat, it suggests a possible hydraulic or even electrical failure that's severe enough to prevent gear retraction, even with the rat active. And then keep in mind, the rat needs airspeed. So it needs at least 130 knots to power certain systems, anything below that, and it's not going to be much help. We don't know the exact airspeed, but it looks to me like Air India 171 was getting extremely slow in game, probably slower than 130 knots. And the failure to retract the gear potentially combined with some sort of mix up with the flaps that contributed to excessive drag and insufficient lift. So at that slower speed, the rat may have been incapable of powering gear retraction and it doesn't power gear retraction under all conditions. Again, it needs specific conditions and it needs to be providing a specific amount of power to also power that gear retraction. So potentially in this incident, it didn't have the ability to do it due to it handling other system failures. It's designed to supply limited hydraulic and electrical power to critical flight control systems and avionics in an emergency. It prioritizes aircraft control over secondary functions, which it deems like gear retraction. The center hydraulic system System which operates the landing gear relies on primary pumps under normal conditions and the rat's limited output is inadequate for the high pressure demand of gear retraction as supported by some technical sources and observations from this crash. So again, there'll be an official investigation into this. I'm sure those pilots were fighting to the very end, doing their best, doing everything they could do to try to save these people's lives. What do you think of that rat deployment? What do you think it says about this incident? I hope this video helps you. And again, check out this video right here here, guys. This video right here is one that I think you'll enjoy. So that's the best compliment you can give me. The more videos you watch, the more I can keep bringing you content like this. And then go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. That would just mean a lot. It would help me grow the channel. And I'll see you on this video right here. This is Ryan on the Max Afterburner channel, signing off.